Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at Kettering Kickoff Day 1, checking in with team number 503, Frog Force DTE Division winners at Michigan State Championships. Congratulations on an awesome season. Uh, Frog Force really loved the overall package in this robot. Of course, we'll be covering a lot of the mechanical features. you got to take a look at this elevator, something called lightsabers, which we'll be talking about uh, as well, too, and some great programming. Take a look more about 503 and Frog Force coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Fun is continuing to grow and looking for new ad partners for the 2024 season. If your organization has a positive message to spread to our over 250,000 unique viewers, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash contact to get more information. Let's, not, let's start talking about the uh, intake uh, as we start to follow the journey, uh, of course, of scoring pieces through your robot. So talk about what's gone into it and we'll uh, kind of keep winding through more of it. Yeah, sure. So this is our um, second intake generation. Um, we originally had a pneumatic powered intake that slides out from back here, but we changed that up for a four bar after some inconsistency issues. Um, so our cube intake runs down under here and then runs down into our indexer here, goes through these two rollers to get it centered and then into our claw. Um, and then our cone intake goes down on these ramps down into the center of our claw from the single substation. Um, do you want to run cube intake? Now, when I noticed you did the outtake for the cube there, it looked like it did kind of uh, shoot it out a bit. Are you using that as part of your game strategy? Yes, we use this in our auto to hit our three-piece cubes, and then we sometimes shoot cubes low just to shoot them from a distance. Um, the other thing I want to ask you, too, is you talked about uh, making a change on there. What what made you want to make that change, and what were the, the results um, of doing that? Did you get better by doing it? Yeah, we had trouble with our intake coming out a bunch when our, um, basically, our pneumatics were inside some tubes, and whenever those tubes were bent, we had trouble actuating our intake so we couldn't intake any game pieces. So when we swapped for a four bar, we didn't have really issues with minor bends causing um, us to not be able to intake. Taylor, I want to talk about the uh, claw that you have in here. I saw, you know, with that the transfer essentially that you have going from the uh, indexer then into the claw. Uh, I'd love to hear more about that. And then of course, we'll cover the elevator as well too. Yeah, so basically when our game piece goes through our intake, these rollers are spinning and uh, suck in the cube or they go down the ramp and this spins and takes in the cone. And then when we score, this flips over. And so basically our cone flips over, so onto the pegs. And then this is our elevator. It is a four stage elevator made completely out of RevMax tube and mostly 3D printed parts. It has one continuous belt that is over 10 feet long and it is driven by this one singular motor. Perfect, and uh, talking about as we demo uh, some different uh, positions, uh, just walk me through what they are and, uh, and we'll show them off. Okay, so mid, do you wanna shoot mid? So this is mid and this is like right over our intake and, it, and we uh, drop the cones onto the mid peg. Do you wanna shoot high now? So this is our high position, it's very tall, and um, we use this to shoot high cones and cubes. And then uh, I know you talked about earlier, we mentioned something about lightsabers. Talk yes. to me more about what that is. Um, so these are lightsabers, these uh, silver rods on the sides, and basically they uh, reroute our wires and pneumatic to our claw so that it functions and um, can actuate the pneumatics. So this is a lightsaber. Um, it extends like this. That's why we call it lightsaber, because it's like in Star Wars when it extends. And yeah, that's basically what our lightsabers are. Let's start to wrap up this row. Sanjay, talk to me about uh, programming side of things. Uh, I know you're using uh, amplitude detection, doing some path planning as well. So I'd love to hear more about uh, what you did this year. Yeah, sure. So to start with our robot, we have two cameras. We have one one camera up here and one camera in the back. 
Both of these are connected to an Orange Pi 5 embedded in the robot that's running photon vision for our April tag detection. And we use that to constantly update our odometry both during teleop and autonomous. For autonomous, what we do is we do fully encode uh, path generation. We have a custom path generator based heavily off of Team 6328's path generator um, where we specify these landmarks on the field. So you can see these are a lot of the different measurements we've taken of each side on each of the fields we've competed on this season. So we measure um, different distances and these we convert into actual um, two-dimensional points in the robot code. And then every single waypoint in our paths is relative to one of these. Meaning that in the code I say I'm either in the shop or maybe I'm at this Kettering event, maybe I'm at our week one event. All of that and our paths will get automatically scaled to whatever field we're on because it's relative to the actual game element. So it helps us be a little bit more resilient to changes in the field. Last thing I want to ask you is uh, with the April text in particular, obviously last year was the first year we saw it. There's some new changes coming in regards to April text just in regards to like what configuration it is. Uh, have you looked into that at all? Does it even make a difference really for what your team's looking at doing? Yeah. It We've looked into it. It doesn't make too big of a difference because what we're doing is we're just feeding it into our um, our position estimate. And what we're able to do with that is we've built this custom button board where we're not using it anymore. We had to convert it so that we could uh, for the Rainbow Rumble offseason event for the different colors. But previously, these would select which grid and which cell within the grid for the robot to auto align to, and then the driver can just press one button and the robot will drive itself to the position. We found that it worked decently well, but it wasn't all that much faster than a human driver. And then generally with the rest of our robot, almost all of it is fully automated. With the intaking and scoring, there's just two buttons being pressed. There's an intake button and a score button. And every other transfer and other component is handled by a custom state engine that we have running inside the robot. Well, 503 Frog Force, uh, wish you best of luck in the next year, but congratulations on a great season uh, here with uh, Charge Up. And can't wait to see what you bring for Crescendo. So thanks a lot for taking the time, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.